So hey, it's Dan Sparrow here, www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Once again, Dan Sparrow. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about the different kind of sites that are out there in operation today. Um, you have two main categories. You have the academic institutions and the private institutions. And then you have the academic institutions are the nonprofit. And then you have the private institutions, which are the for-profit. Um, they both have their good sides and their bad sides. Um, let's start with the nonprofit academic institutions. Uh, up until the probably 1990s, these academic nonprofit institutions conducted most of the of the research um, in this country. Uh, pharmaceutical companies would outsource a great deal of the research to them, and um, one of the things that these institutions are burdened with are e extreme regulatory hurdles that they have to deal with. Uh, because they are federally funded, they have to prove every year that they're worthy of another grant. So the ethical bar is raised super high, as it should be, um, and uh, the uh, regulations around it are e extremely high, and some would argue that too high. But anyways, that's a topic of uh, discussion that's uh, way um, above my head. But um, so basically, these academic nonprofits conducted most of the trials until the 1990s. Pharmaceutical companies started gradually shifting towards the private, for-profit companies, and uh, I'm a beneficiary of that. Uh, my company, South Coast Clinical Trials, we're in that category. We're a for-profit company. Um, now, the for-profit sites are not burdened with as much uh, regulatory issues as the academic institutions. Now, don't get me wrong, there's ethics committees, there's uh, audits, there's all kinds of stuff, but when, when you compare the for-profit sites to the academic sites, there's no comparison. The academic institutions have to do a little, they have to jump through a lot more hoops to accomplish the same task that the for-profit sites would do. So, pharmaceutical companies are not stupid. They started gradually outsourcing uh, more and more clinical trials to the for-profit sector pretty soon and you know today 2010 the majority of the trials are being conducted in the private setting now the good thing is we're more efficient and uh, we can do it cheaper than the academic institutions because once again we're not burdened with as many regulatory hurdles and uh, we uh, uh, therefore can keep costs down for our pharmaceutical uh, sponsors now the, the bad part of this is of this privatization is that um, there's more competition obviously there's a lot of for-profit sites oftentimes within the same region so they compete heavily amongst each other and this competition um, leads to some uh, recruitment tactics that a lot of people would consider unethical and uh, a lot of people in the academic institution would not even conceive of. Um, another thing is that these uh, for-profit sites, um, there's an incentive for them to enroll as many trial participants as they can because they're going to get paid more. So we're not dealing with grants here where we have a, a grant and we have to spend all that money and we don't care how many people we enroll because we're still going to get that grant. Now in the for-profit industry, if you don't meet enrollment numbers, you will, chances are you will not get very many studies in the future. So it's, it's extremely competitive. Sites are always trying to push the envelope and enroll more and more uh, subjects than their competitors. And this has led to some issues. Um, you have a lot of sites out there advertising that uh, if people join their studies, they're going to get free medical care and free medical treatment. This is completely false. If you ever hear this from a site, run away. Don't walk away, run. Uh, they're lying to you. The uh, uh, clinical trials does not constitute medical care. It does not constitute medical treatment. We collect data. That's what we do. Now you get medical attention, and I've written about this, and you get extremely good medical attention, much better than you would get in a private setting when you go see your doctor. But that's another subject. I made video posts on that, and we have other blogs on that. So there's good and bad, but I just wanted you to know the difference between the two. And within the for-profit, you have the large CROs, like uh, publicly traded companies, 
that operate on a global scale. They usually conduct the large phase one studies and they have their own facilities where they have uh, room for like 80 beds per facility for the healthy volunteer um, overnight studies. And then you have sites, smaller sites like, uh, like mine, where we have three extremely small sites in the Southern California region, uh, each one about five or six employees, and we conduct only psychiatric trials. Um, and then in the other uh, therapeutic areas, you have sites that specialize in cancer, sites that specialize in hypertension and diabetes, what have you. So there's hundreds, if not thousands, of research sites out there, and it could be overwhelming for a, a trial participant. So I'm just uh, spelling it out for you here so that you can be more informed and you can know what to look for. So the first thing you want to do when you um, look at a site, the first thing you want to know is, are they academic? or are they a private uh, institution? And uh, okay, it may be harder for you to get enrolled in the academic site because their, their incentive to get you in is not as high as it would be in the for-profit. Now, if they're for-profit, you've got to look at their recruitment strategies. Um, are you seeing them talk about free medical care, free medical treatment? If so, uh, I would be weary of uh, joining a, a, a trial with them. Um, otherwise, there's thousands of good sites that do research the right way in the private sector, and you want to kind of focus in on those. If you have any questions, email me. I know a lot of sites um, in different therapeutic indications, and I would be more than happy to help you out off camera. So www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. My email is dan, that's D-A-N, at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from all of you.